what are the services that you will provide? Now, this may sound so obvious, but what happens is that you need to know and set expectations that you only provide lawn mowing services. Uh, for, for my many years of doing this, lawn mowing is sort of on the, shall I say, bottom of the totem pole of uh, housing services. You, it is the least less specialized. You will never ask uh, an electrician to also paint the cabinets. You'll never ask a plumber to frame the house. They're specialized in what they do. They have extensive training. They need to be licensed in the city that they lived in. They need to have apprentice uh, apprenticeship as well. Where lawn mowing, anybody can do it. Anybody with good training, hopefully when they take their course, uh, a kid can do it in the neighborhood. But what happens is when it's a lower type of experience, you may be naturally asked to do a variety of things. So let me give you a really good snapshot on what those could be. If you lawn mow, you may be asked to mulch. You may be asked to clean the gutters. You may be asked to frequently water their yard and their lawn and their gardens. You may be asked to dig, dig a hole for garden posts. You might be asked to walk their dog or do edging. All these things involve being outside. If since you're outside anyways, maybe you can do some other stuff too. You must set clear expectations is that what you do, the few things you do, you do very well. And what are those things? You will mow their lawn, you will trim the edges of their yard, and you will leaf blow any debris that's on the hardscapes. All of those three things you do and you do very well. Now there may be a few things that you might need to do. For instance, if a large enough branch fell onto the grass, you'll need to take in your box the saw and cut it and then put it away if there's extensive twigs that fall onto the grass you may be you may need to pick it up and put those in a trash bin or a yard bin if there's lots of debris and trash blown in from the neighbor's yard or from the street you will have to pick that up before you lawn mow but that is to help you lawn mow better it is not an additional tacked on job it's a part of you uh, making your job a job well done. The big takeaway is to set expectations, to know that you do these three very well, you're very proficient, and you do a great job at it, but nothing more. So what are the things? Well, I'm gonna show you a real life example. So we have lawn mowing, and here is that. So a big question you get is what to wear. You're in the summer, wear light clothing, I'm having a jacket on just for, but just so that I could put my mic on, but I'll probably wear something light, short sleeves, and oftentimes I like to wear a hat. That's up to you. But wear something light and that you're comfortable with. What's more important is the footwear, okay? I love my sandals, but they may not be the best in maneuvering all the equipment and you could injure yourself. I love my canvas shoes a lot too but these are incredibly slippery and they can, they're really soft now and they can make you kind of roll your ankle if you step on the wrong path. So what I recommend is an old simple pair of running shoes, tennis shoes with socks on. This is really good. It has a lot of grip on your feet when you're pushing the lawnmower. Also wear socks. You could do ankle length. I'm gonna show you ankle and a little bit of mid calf. It's really important that when sometimes you're walking along pathways, along side brushes, and it could scratch up against your legs. The trimmer, oftentimes the trimmer, when it spins around, sometimes the line itself can get cut off and fling right at your leg, or all of the debris can come back and fling at your leg too. So if you can wear long pants that are very, very light nylon breathable, but if not, tennis shoes, socks, and you're good to go. Okay, so I'm walking you through the basics right at the start. Getting ready to mow your lawn. The lawn mower is on the lawn. If you need gloves, put on gloves. Get ready to grip board and uh, making sure you have the right shoes on. Basically making sure you're comfortable. If you need earmuffs, put them on. And even to go further, if you want to wear, wear a vest, go right ahead too. But basic thing is get ready to be comfortable and mow the lawn, the primary function of the service. Okay, so in this clip, I'm going to show you the types of lawn you will encounter and how to cut them. 
So we're gonna show, so I'm gonna show you a typical lot, and a typical lot, and a challenging lot. So these are the three you'll counter. This gives you an idea of what to expect when you meet your client, your potential client, and look at the kind of lot that they have. So with a typical lot, it's going to be, it looks uh, very simple. There's few obstructions in the way. You will have the perimeter of the lot. You'll have the house and the garage structures, any sidewalks, a couple of trees. But all in all, there's cutting spaces and it's easy to get to. So for this, the principle is to get the job done. Now, my best practice tips is to always do the outside border and then go switchbacks back and forth in the interior um, and it can be done a couple of ways it doesn't have to be a hard set rule so if I were to come here I could this front and the side and the back I could put it into two sections and then I will start right off from here go around I like to go the border at least twice so that's one two and then probably three. And then from here, go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Same thing, I will go to the rear. Always go from the outside. It establishes really clear borders. That's one, two. And then from here, I could already start going back and forth. Okay. And same thing here. You'll have, a, there's a couple of trees in the way. How I would go about that is I'll separate it into two halves and this rear I would go around and then once I go back and forth you just go up around the tree go behind it continue do that again and from this point on the tree part is pretty much clear you might have to go a little bit here but then it eventually evens out and the same thing over here so by then you've accomplished all parts of the lawn cutting service and that is what a typical lot should look like or what you should expect so here is an atypical lot a lot that is uh, a little bit more unusual it's not the clear-cut rectangular or square shape and and your and actually this is my lot. I live on the end of a block. My lot is in the shape of a triangle. And I just wanted to really testify that any lot really is possible. It may look hard in it may look hard describing it. It may look hard on paper, but in person it's very easy to see how to solve it. So what I like to do is I actually kind of separate into so this part is its own part. And this part is its own part. There's a little bit of log here. So there's three parts to mow, but I'll show you how I do this front. So the front is, I start mowing right up here along the boulevard. I go up here, all the way around this jet. There'll be quite a few turns here. And then this is where I encounter the trees. So that's one difficult part. I continue, then I go around to the other side of the tree. So by this point, I'm done with the trees. And at this part, I can actually go zigzag back and forth already, back and forth, and that's done. So this is a little bit complicated, but it just goes to show that it's really possible. This part, I go around the shed, along the back border, or along this, I have a curved log feature here. And then from this point, I like to already go back and forth. There's nothing back here. And again, this is very simple. It's a straight, long rectangle. This is, can go back and forth. So as you can see, in no time, you've already accomplished cutting all the parts, even within more atypical lot. Now this may surprise you, but a challenging lot, uh, the the lot here looks normal, it looks rectangular, 
but challenging lots are the ones that have lots of structures on the surface cutting area. There's lots of trees, there's garden beds, there are mulch beds, there's like fairy gardens in the front, and it can be kind of tight here. Those for me are challenging lots because you have to do a lot of turning um, and that is what you should anticipate. So for me, if I ever approach a challenging lot, um, almost always, if there's lots of structures, it's always on one part of the house. It's kind of unusual that it's everywhere, but it'll be on one side. So I kind of like to section that part by itself. And I like to do the hardest things first. So um, I'll make sure to, you know, go around, scout around any areas that are tight. Then I'll start my engine and I'll go around the perimeter out of the whole thing. One good thing about having lots of structures on the lot is that there is less cutting surface. So I'll probably go one more time if my lawnmower fits. And then from this point, I'll go around this way. And then I might end up going, cutting it here and doing switchbacks here. So this part's done. And then I might go up here, just quickly get this done. And then go back and forth, this part's done. And then continue on the second part here. This part, because this structure is so big, I'll just end up going around it all the way and meet up any leftover spots over here. So a challenging lot, again, has lots of structures that I'll have to constantly go over. There may be tight spots and it will end soon that I could have to make um, tinier sections of cut here to finish out the area. But I really want to emphasize my promise to you is that yeah, there are going to be all types of lots and it is very, very possible. You can do it. Just look at the lot, look at the, the land or the lawn that you're going to cut. Know that it is very cuttable. Uh, know that there may be some trees you have to go over, some garden beds, some playground areas, but all in all, do your best to cut the wide surface and then aim for the trimming and then leaf blow to clear the hard surfaces of any debris. Very possible, you can definitely do it. But here, I wanna show you how I cut this side in real time, how I cut my lawn, a triangular lawn with trees. So let's get to it. All right, so just giving an explanation of what's going on right in front of you. I'm starting at the side yard. You see me right at the top left corner. I've already gone along the edge of the street past that car and I'm starting on the border. So I typically like to do at least minimum two times around the border and then I'll do the switch backs. Also before I approach any lawn, I'm gonna quickly scope around, take 30 seconds and remove any tree debris, remove any uh, lawn chairs or children's toys or baskets that uh, will obstruct the lawnmower while it's mowing. And that will lead to like a faster way just to get the lawn done sooner. I'll speed up some parts here too, but just really want you to see uh, what happens at a, at a bird's eye view. So um, don't worry if you can't hit every tight angle because that's what the trimmer is for. Your basic main objective is to go the large areas along the borders at least twice before doing the switchbacks. And I'm gonna speed up up and down, up and down so you see what I'm talking about. And as you see here, I'm getting to the point of the switchbacks, going back and forth, back and forth, um, and hitting to the final point uh, when it's done. And you know that it's done because you could say you could tell the differences of the grass height from the previous row to your current one and you know when you're finished. And if you're wondering, this side yard, the largest part, took 13 minutes. And then we have trimming, weed whacking. Okay, we're on to trimming. Trimming is where you use an equipment, a device, to go along the border edge, the perimeter of your client's lawn, and any other structure, trees, garden beds, along edges, that the lawnmower couldn't get to. What trimming does is make a clean, fine cut 
that really brings a nice finished look, contrast to any height differences of the grass, to the hardscapes, to the border edges along the fences. Gives it a really clean, nice cut. And this is how we do it. Make sure that you have your trimmer ready. If it's battery powered, make sure it's charged. If it's gas power, have enough gas. Get your gloves ready. This will be a very hand heavy job. Making sure that you have a full firm grip. It can be fatigue or tire heavy because you have to carry the wand the entire time. Sometimes you may have to do a swaying motion, but in short, your job is to go along the edges and making sure that you go close, but not close enough to whatever that you're hitting and cut every tall grass that the lawnmower did not get to. I'm gonna to give you a closer look, come on over. So the trimmer has most importantly the line. This is the actual uh, device that will cut because it swings so fast that it will cut the grass. It has this shield that will keep any debris from flying and hitting back to the leg or even to the body or to the eyes. This shield also acts as a estimate on how far you should stay away from the hard surface or a fence. If I were to trim, I should not go all the way up here because the line is going to hit this tree. In some cases, it will be a fence. It could be a retaining wall. And if it does that enough, this line will break. You don't want to, you don't want your line to break. It will naturally break anyways, but you really want to avoid breakage because that means you have to take this off, stop, you have to take it off, make it longer enough. All of those things just make the lawn mowing process longer. You want to be as fast and swift as possible. So pretend that this uh, is a radius that can go all the way around. I should be this is too close, this is too far. It should be about this length all the way around any item, any border perimeter that will cut the grass enough and yet not break it because it's not gonna hit any object or structure. Trimming, you know you're doing it right if you're going quite stealth and smooth and fast. Don't miss any parts, however, you should ask you go pretty fast as well. Go right along the trim in a very smooth, calm manner. What you may think that you should do is constantly wave back and forth. You should not do that. It's a waste of time and energy, especially along any straight edges. The only time you really need to go back and forth is if you hit a patch of tall grasses. If it's maybe the first time mowing that lawn, there's just a lot of tall uh, overgrown bushes or tall weeds from the previous year. Otherwise, stealth, smooth, and fast is the way to go. And let me show you how that works. And bear in mind that you can go forward or backward, whatever is more ergonomically comfortable for you. So again, again, stealth fast. Your object is to tilt right along this edge, not too close, not too far, just enough to cut that hair, overgrown hair grasses that the lawnmower cannot get to. So do the quickest and most efficient way is to do the entire perimeter of that selected area then go towards the any trees any poles um, any garden beds in the small structure all in all it should take no more than four minutes 
depending on the lawn or any of the complexities of that yard. And you're gonna see me do it in real time on a wide angle. This section here, I'm gonna do the perimeter and then go to any of the poles that are holding up this volleyball net and anywhere else that needs some trimming. So as you can see, that took pretty fast. This was the back section. There will be a front lawn and a side yard. All in all, it takes really quick. The, the more you do it, the better you get. The more uh, muscle memory you have on how far away to stay from the edge and get a really stealth, smooth, fast cut. This is before. Here is a patch of grass uh, along the edge of these uh, rows of tree trunks that I purposely left overgrown. I want you to see the before. So here I am trimming along these stumps and these are, they're overgrown. I have to take a little bit extra time. I can't be so stealth and fast. I have to kind of go back and forth, back and forth. And I'm doing this up down motion to kind of squash those taller pieces of grass. But I'm just going back and forth, taking a little bit extra time because this has been uh, a little bit overgrown. So you might face this when you meet your, your first potential client, uh, you know, the first lawn cut of the season from last winter, last spring, you're gonna have a little bit of overgrowth and uh, just know that it takes a little time. But the great thing is that once it's done, when you come the following weeks, the following week, it is it virtually takes care of itself you don't you have to uh, just quickly go bypass it there's no more overgrowth because it's been maintained from the previous weeks by you
And here is the before and after pictures. All right, so I just wanted to show you something that you will encounter. That's not all gonna be roses and butterflies. You will have to replace your line uh, or extend it frequently. You'll have to extend it frequently. The line will be damaged just naturally and uh, making sure your tub, your box is close by. Have all the tools ready to make it fast. So here is the bottom of the trimmer. Uh, it usually has that cassette, the spool inside uh, this, um, the holding device. There's a cap. There's the actual spool cassette with the line wrapped all over in it. And I just wanted to show you how it looks like. There's only a little bit of line left. And it goes through these holes as well. Now, once those little holes are damaged, then you will need to replace a brand new spool or cassette. The line is pretty uh, hard and robust, but because of how fast it spins, it, it will just break uh, over time easily uh, five or six times throughout the season, depending on how many lawns you have. So I take it out of its uh, holding container and I will extend the line outward. I extend it out all the way, well, I put it through the hole first so that it spins correctly. And yes, sometimes it falls out, you have to put it back in, it falls out, that's the little thing you might need some help with. And then I pull the line, um, I pull the line all the way to the point where it's outside the edge of the guard, that black protection guard. I think I'm trying to fit it the correct way, making sure that the correct side is touching it. Then I cut the line because it doesn't need to extend any further than that. And I replace the cap back on. We also have leaf blowing here, the techniques that I like to use. Okay, so I'm just walking you through leaf blowing. And that's the, the last, the the last big equipment service that uh, you will perform. So making sure that you are familiar with your type of leaf blower. You might have a handheld. Uh, it might be battery powered. Making sure that uh, it's charged or if it needs gasoline, fill up gas. Mine in this case is a backpack style and I need to do a few things. I need to put the starter ig igniter in the middle position. I need to pump oil, fuel uh, to get it going. Uh, I need to flip the choke to uh, cold. So all of those things are particular to my model manufacturer brand and making sure I'm comfortable. So what I'm showing you is the basics. Do not do this. Don't walk straight, pointing the nozzle down. Instead, you're going to broadcast it, big, big sweeping left and right, left and right, left and right. That is how you do the maximum area exposure of getting all the debris off the hardscapes and with leaf blowing there's a lot of walking backwards <laughs> you could like just turn around and walk backwards but you i like to uh walk backwards instead of turning around it's so anticipate a lot of fast walking backwards and a lot of uh, broad broadcasting here is another wrong thing never ever 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 blow into the door into the patio, into the property house. Instead, start from the door and go outward, out, 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 away, away from the house, away from the front steps, away from the threshold. Your job is to make it clean, not dirty, especially inside their house. Again, going with the broadcast motion, far, far away. And here's this just another view, the patio, then it's just a broadcast, making it clear. Anticipate lots of brisk walking back and forth. So what to consider when leaf blowing is the wind. Number one, if there is no wind, perfect. You can broadcast and blow 
as conveniently as you want, so long as it's outward away from the entrance of the house. Now, if there's wind, that makes it tricky. The big tip is you go with the wind. You're gonna blow the way, the direction the wind is blowing. Do not go against the wind. If you do that, you'll cause more debris to, to backflow back onto the hardscape surfaces and it'll just cause you more work. So case in point, this is a perfect situation. I'm standing sort of in the middle of this patio. The wind is blowing this way. I would like to blow it that way since I'm so close to the edge, but it makes more sense if I stand on that way at the edge and blow all the way down this way, the way the wind is blowing. Makes more sense. I'm going with the wind, it's easier. Even though the edge is right there, it's best if I go with the wind all the way down to the end. And let me show you how that looks like. So I'm gonna go to the start of the edge because the wind is blowing that way. Okay, I'm just showing a different angle here at the portion of the patio. When you get tight spaces, do not go full throttle. It's gonna blow a lot of dust back at you. Instead, on idle, just light little puffs and puffs. That'll do a better job of getting rid of that debris. And when it's out, then you can go full throttle. Rounding out the last part of leaf blowing, once you've done the basic floor part, then go back and do any of the patio furniture. Okay, so we're at the driveway. Did you see what I did there? Do not blow into the garage, but I'm starting at the highest elevation point, blowing everything down and away and down and away and down. From then on, uh, I'm back at the driveway and I start at the door pointed down and then blow away away from the house. There's a little tight corner where I barely, I put it on idle and just do little puffs. Starting from one side of the driveway, broadcasting back and forth, back and forth, going back up and starting the other side. Lots of back and forth. And that is leaf flow in a nutshell. Okay, so for today's homework, I want you to be comfortable confident in the three services you provide. What are they? Lawn mowing, trimming, and leaf blowing. Lawn mowing, trimming, leaf blowing. One more time, lawn mowing, trimming, and leaf blowing. Say that over and over again, you'll be the best at providing a great lawn care service.